For those of you who already know basic camera and shooting film, it's time to think about the bigger picture. By this, I mean framing and mise-en-scene. Now, what is mise-en-scene? It's a French term that means everything in the scene. This refers to everything that you see in the shot, costumes, lighting, props, location, etc. It's a term that describes everything that's important to the scene. A perfect example of great mise-en-scene is from The Royal Tenenbaums by Wes Anderson. Each of the children's rooms tell a story about the children's personalities and lifestyles, from how well they are organized, to how they store their clothes and books, to what their rooms are decorated with. Every item in their room is precisely placed to show an aspect of their personalities. Another example would be in The Thin Blue Line, where Errol Morris shows us a reenactment for what happened on the night a police officer was shot and killed. As the film progresses, he changes what we see. It goes from one car to another, one set of events to a separate set of events, and he changes up the scene to demonstrate how events unfolded differently for every person's perspective. When it comes to framing, you want your frame choice to reflect what you're trying to tell. Take the King's speech. There's a ton of headroom above Colin Firth's character in this scene. Now, normally this would be a mistake, but the headroom is supposed to reflect the weight this character feels. You can use the same concept for other types of shots too. Setting a character alone in a large frame emphasizes them feeling solitary and alone. Or if you set up a Dutch angle or a canted shot, that emphasizes that something is off within the scene or within the character themselves. You can do really crazy framing as long as it means something. Lighting can be used to say something as well. In The Shawshank Redemption, when Andy and Red are sitting together by the wall, they are bathed in shadow. When Andy realizes what he has to do and stands up, he steps out of the darkness and into the light. This is no accident. It was intentional to tell the story. You can use shadows and lighting to emphasize all kinds of emotions. Dread, hope, despair, evil intent, all are possible with the right lighting style. Color is the last thing I'd like to touch upon, using Sin City as an example. The film is mostly in black and white, but the filmmakers draw our attention to things using sharp colors. They use red to show certain elements, like a dress, lipstick, blood, or police sirens. Another example from the film would be That Yellow Bastard. Seeing him grotesque and yellow in color intentionally makes him look repulsive. I hope this gives you a better understanding of intentions when setting up your camera as well as everything you set in front of it. You can apply all of these techniques to narrative film, commercials, and even documentaries. Now go set up your scene.